So for FM synthesis, it's way easier to modify one of the tutorial patches than to just start from the scratch. It's way more efficient. So go to the references, click on home, and scroll down to MSP tutorials. And under additive and modulation synthesis, you will find the FM synthesis patch. I also recommend additive synthesis patch too, but let's try the FM synthesis patch now. Click on it and then click on open tutorial. And there you go. Let's explore some of the things that you can do here. We'll see our volume control and play a note. But we're not hearing too much right now because we have to set a carrier frequency and a duration as well. And you notice here that we have these preset objects. And if I click on each of these squares, it pulls up a different preset with different values on our two envelopes and carrier frequency and everything and it just generates different tones. When you create it, by default, this is the shape that you get. But if you only want two presets, you can uh, make it smaller. So it's only two if you want this many presets. So you can just change the shape and the size of the object, and that will determine how many presets you have access to. So let's just modify the preset that we have, preset object that we have here. Let's just extend it to two more squares, actually. So you actually see a really small difference in the color of these squares, if they have a preset loaded into them or not. You notice that the last one is a darker gray and that means that it is empty. There's no presets loaded into them. If I click on the other ones, you can see that the uh, settings change, but if I click on the last one, nothing changes. So let's create uh, one of our own presets and also demonstrate how, these, how, how this patch works. Well, your carrier frequency is your main frequency. So I can ch uh, choose it to be 200 Hertz, or I can make a higher pitch sound by increasing the frequency. The harmonicity value determines how harmonic our sound is. If we set it to zero or one, it will be pretty harmonious. But if we set a decimal value, something like this, it creates a very inharmonic or dissonant tone. So for my new preset, I would like to keep it pretty harmonious. And this is our amplitude envelope, meaning how our sound's volume changes over time. Over the period of five seconds, my sound will rise in volume and then it will decrease in volume and go back to silence. Let's hear it again. Cool, so let's say I really like this tone and I would like to save it. In order to save a preset, you would have to hold down shift and click on one of these squares. So I'll hold down shift and I click on number nine and now my preset is saved. So if I now go back to a different preset, I can come back to it and it has all of those settings that I had set. Of course, I can now change it, but if I click on it again, it will take me back to that original setting that I saved as a preset. So you can really spend time and create lots and lots of different presets in this patch alone. As you heard, there's so many different tones. You can get a little bit more crazy by creating different sets of envelopes, or you can get simpler harmonious sounds. Okay, so this is a pretty cool patch and I want to include this in my main patch that I was working with. So I want to use this as an abstraction and the first step in using and creating an abstraction would be to save this patch in the same folder that my main patch is located in. So I'm going to save as and I will make sure that I save it to the same folder that the rest of my patches are, specifically my main patch. And I'll rename it to something that makes sense to me and it's short and doesn't include any spaces. Let's try it. Pay attention to lowercase and uppercase. All right, it's here. And again, we don't have any inputs and outputs on this because we haven't created any inlets and outlets in that patch. So let's go back to that patch. 
and let's decide what we want to include in our main patch. Let's talk about the output first. Of course, I know that I want the volume control for this synthesizer to be out in my main patch and I identified what's the last step before my gain and it's here. and send the output of this object to this outlet. Now, I don't want to include every single function and number box in my main patch because I actually want to use my preset object in order to change all of them just with one click, with going from one setting to another setting. I want to be able to change my preset. And right now we can click on each of these squares to scroll through the presets, but we can also send them numbers which correspond to the number of that preset and that will take us to that preset as well. Notice here, three, five. So I can send an inlet to this preset object and know that I can just send it numbers to access different presets here. That way I don't really need to have access to changing the duration or the shape of the function or the harmonicity value of each tone that I get. I'll just rely on my presets and if I want to I'll just can make more presets. What we do need is this button which activates our amplitude envelope and that way we can hear the sound. Now what about our carrier frequency or our main frequency? Well I told you guys that I didn't want to create a new sequencer for this synthesizer and in fact I want to receive MIDI from an outside source. But I know that this object here wants to receive frequency values and not MIDI values. If you remember, we have MTOF object, which is the MIDI to frequency conversion. So I can just attach that and I'll send an inlet to this MTOF object so that in my main patch, I can receive MIDI values and once they get inside of this FM synthesis patch, they will be converted into frequency equivalents and make this whole thing work. We also need to trigger the button, so I need another inlet. I'm going to put them in order that makes sense to me. So, for example, if, to me it makes sense that the button will be triggered first and then we get the MIDI information and then the third inlet would be the preset setting. So now let's save this. All right, we can have a gain control. And if you didn't know with these sliders, you can scroll them the other way. And now this is minimum, this is maximum. I'll just send, send the output to both inputs of my easy DAC. Our main patch is getting pretty busy too, but we can clean up these patch cords later on. In fact, let's just move this down here. Okay, so if you guys remember, the first input was just a bang to trigger. The second input was our MIDI value and the third input was our preset number. So I can actually just attach an integer box or you can also make separate messages but this is our preset number. So now we're going to use the note in object which receives MIDI note messages. And let's look at the help file. So the first output is the pitch information, which is what we need, but it can also just work as a button too. So now I'm going to go ahead and open my title cycles and initiate the MIDI output. And now we're going to lock our patch, double click on note in and make sure that it's selected to max one. And I'm also going to connect an integer box to the output just so we can visually also see what MIDI numbers are coming in from this object. Cool, so we can go in title now. And I have this one line of code here that plays these uh, four notes and cycles between this two at the end. And in Super Collider, I defined the name of my MIDI to just be MIDI, but you could have chosen any other name. And now if I run this line, You'll see here in max, the MIDI numbers are going and I can change my preset number. Great, so you can do super cool things now. You can randomize the preset number so you can just like jump between these different sounds. Of course, you can do more exciting things as far as programming in title goes to create better melodies and rhythms. And you can create multiple instances of this FM synthesis patch. 
Okay, so I went ahead and essentially duplicated um, this system. So we have two FM synthesizers now. That means that now we can receive two separate MIDI outputs from Tidal Cycles or any other program that you have set up. And uh, I called the other MIDI output MIDI 2. They're on two separate channels. And if we look at the node in object, the first one I'm receiving it uh, from 2MAX and the other one is from 2MAX 2. So that's how I differentiated this too. Um, and now we can go ahead and run each of these lines. And see that each of them will be separate from one another and I can change the preset. We can set the output of any of these node ends to our counter, but remember that this is not a consistent metronome timekeeper. It just sends out a bang every time a node is played, so kind of like in rhythm of the melody. So the step sequencer has become more of a, like an experimental step sequencer than a functional one, but you know. 